Uh, I'm gonna touch this video here in respect to Bohinska Bela. Uh, maybe even in Slovenian language, Vojašnica Bohjana Kekca. Uh, a kasarn, 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 kasarna, kasarna, e, bustiana kekca. Uh. This was a very, very popular destination of the Josip Brostita. I can tell you that this was one of the first military installation a Josip Broz Tito would uh, stop by with me at a very early age. Uh, a military installations in the so-called Yugoslavia were used literally to torture people. They uh, were very convenient with a staff ready and eager to do whatever it takes to satisfy. This was one of them. This was one of the locations I was. Um, Josip Brostito. This was not too far from Berdo Prikranio. No. And so. Due to this vicinity, due to this uh, beautiful location here, uh, Josip Brostito, I'm gonna give some directions here. Josip Brostito would, uh, this is what is it? 33 kilometers from uh, Bordo Castle. Uh, Josip Rostito, what he would do is, as a child, he would leave me inside of this military installation where they would torture me, and then he would also either stop by or then he would come to pick me up and so on. This is basically the way this stuff was. Okay. So, um, what this video is actually not dedicated to the Josip Broz Tito. It's actually some other stuff that angers me. And it's not really Josip Broz Tito. Josip Broz Tito, I already dedicated to him stuff. I don't want to get into it. Bohinska Bela was very, very popped up in my childhood very, very early on. I was three years old, definitely, probably two and a half years old when I entered this facility, Bohinska Bela, UNA. And this isn't dedicated to the Josip Broz Tito. Believe it or not, this is not even dedicated to his Slovenian preferred choice known as Milan Kutra or what became afterwards uh, Borut Pahor. Uh, this stuff is actually dedicated to the opposition of Milan Kucha and Borut Pahor. This is dedicated to Loise Petele, Janus Janša. This is dedicated to the people who claim me. And they were in a complete agreement. These were Udba people, total Udba people. This is this is worse than Kuchan. This is worse than Pahor because they present opposition. And yet these were the people that were the closest people to Josip Brostito next to Bord Pahor and so on. These are secret agents. 
in Yugoslavia. Udba people, top clearance from Udba people, top clearance they have. And so what I want to say to you for this video is that these two criminals, especially the one with beard that you see, insisted me that the military installation Buhinska Bela is gonna succumb there is a, there is a good chance that the whole building will just smash down basically it's just gonna collapse over Josip Brostito was worried about this stuff this is not new this is old it's not new they were worried they were always looking at this military installation however a real uh, progress in respect to what you see right there Josip Brostito worried about what he didn't like fact that he already started to wonder about what you see right there. It was nowhere near as bad as you see right there. And if, you, if I would go through the chronography through that time and so on, it could be that it was like on a two occasions that he would actually go and pay interest uh, he would pay more and more attention to this stuff. I think it was like 98, maybe, maybe even or something like this, that it was like the first time they, they started to think about seriously that this building has a potential to succumb, disappear. Uh, it was like a God sign to Josip Broz Tito, who already did get this kind of suspicion before. But in 1998, in 1978, excuse me, 1978, Josip Broz Tito became sort of paranoid. Josip Broz Tito feared God. He did not believe in God. He hated God, but he feared God. He would not want to admit the torture, the stuff that he was doing, he was very well aware on a child, on me, when he was doing, he was very well aware that stuff that he was doing was just not, it should never have been happening, stuff like that. And they started to torture, and along the way, this military installation where they tortured me, uh, this is very near Austria and Italy. Um, it, it was it was it was rocked more and more with more and more problems with what you see right there, and it was funny because the unit uh, officers, not Josip Brostit alone, uh, he would come because of those commanders. He he wondered about what the fuck goes on and so on. Uh, they really started to wonder because the sight that started to appear in front of them didn't look even nice, even a little bit nice. Of course, they did not believe in God. They hated God, whatever the reason might be. But the sight that started to open in front of this uh, building was uh, quite horrific, actually. It was quite horrific, actually. Um, it looked like the hell is going to open and swallow the whole fucking Yugoslav military building. And it just looked like because of me, because of the torture that went on. Now, uh, the criminal that wanted to take the credit for that and even be deserved for it and absorb all the attention he did during MK Ultra was this guy here. Louis Petrle, uh really, really made me nervous because he appeared here and 
2010 it was and with his claim that this that I have to tell everything about what goes on because the whole building is going to collapse down and it will go into hell uh, before it collapses down that I should tell uh, then he went on and even took the credit uh, suggesting that he was behind uh, behind the earthquakes that it was the earthquakes that were taking this down this uh, this uh, that he was that he was doing something and stuff like this um Loise Peterle, um what angers me about this stuff I, I i need to be detailed about this stuff in final days of yugoslavia inside of this military complex in final days of yugoslavia about like two years before the yugoslavia had fallen apart uh, this is this is just how how can I say there was torture that went on uh, it was a lot of bad stuff that went on but Loisa Petrle and Igor Baucher this is the guy this is another guy this guy here Um, they would deliver me for torture into the military installations. These are the people that would deliver. You know what they stated me in 2010? These people in this house, in this home, they stated me, they don't have absolutely anything about Josip Broz Tito, about any military uh, UN, uh, Yugoslav National Army installation where they would torture me but that they do have it for uh, this place here and it was again Louis Petrle who claimed well you know uh, I managed to preserve at least from Brohin's Cabela there is a proof that you were there and tortured at uh, and on that opportunity Louis Petrle uh, well, prior to departure of the Yugoslav military from Slovenia, together, believe it or not, with Borut Pahor, with Tanya Fayon, they would have wonderful time. They would go there. They would meet those officers uh, during the torture. They would interact with them. Um, it appeared like Boucher and Loise Petrle in probably 1989 uh, demanded credit from me like talking to the UNA officers Serbs on please how they should torture together also with the Tanya Fayon and Bord Pahar that they should torture that they're going to record they're going to have at least one proof this is basically the way this stuff went okay this is the impression they did on me year before 1990, uh, when UNA, Yugoslav military, Belgrade and Moscow, basically were way overdue to get Soviet Union flag thrown down as well as Yugoslav flag thrown down. And the one who destroyed those two flags, I was the one in Moscow and in Belgrade, not at Bohinska Bela, not in Ljubljana, and not, this guy was nowhere near. There's nobody here that you see and others. And you know what they wanted? They wanted for me the credit, for me to acknowledge that there, this is a top Udba individual, this is a Milan Kuchan. You understand? According to me, this individual is worse than Milan Kuchan. This is a worse individual than Bord Pahar. This is worse than Danilo Turk. It's worse than Darnoshek. It's worse than any Udba murderer that existed in Slovenia. This guy here that you see. Okay? And I know so, already based on this account I'm giving you right now, they interacted with the Yana'a, they interacted with the Tanya Fayon, all these people. They were all together 
And it was like they were making me a favor, basically, during like the last year that they're going to get proofs, at least at Bohin's Kabela, like this it was. It is the words that were repeated to me again in 2010, that I have to come out and tell this, that he was the one who did this, and from National Archive and everything, it all disappeared. It was Danilo Turk who threatened me with Milan Kuchan, conditioned me on... It all depends on how I would say, what I would say. And then this guy appeared in 2010, depend from the National Archive and so on. It appears that these people have plundered UDBA, National Slovenian Archive, and have stolen documentation, stolen photos, stolen everything. It appears they emptied absolutely everything. And what they were going to do together with the Serbs was to basically blackmail me. This man demanded from me in 2010 absolute, basically complete submission to him so that he would give me, at least for Bohin's Kabela and so on, this fucking guy whom I have made out of scratch, out of nothing, together with Yanis Yansha. Literally, the two demanded from me to proclaim them through Gorica, negotiations with the Josip Rosita is how I made them place them on the picture. They were on the picture all the time. They both had top clearance, top UDBA, top Yugoslav, top KGB. You understand what the KGB is? It's now no more KGB. It's now FSB or whatever it is in Russia. These people had a top clearance. And in 2010, they started to even extort from me they probably, uh, in respect to this, um, in respect to what you see here, that the whole thing is falling down. Uh, it's really a question, basically, what goes on, what's happening. Is it a natural, the, what you see right there, or is it maybe even something else that goes on? It's really questionable what they're doing. But I'm giving you an account that I was blackmailed on many, many, many occasions by these people, on basically not on Bohun's Cabela, but on how basically to see the whole picture is about Josip Brasito, what went on, what to tell, and how to pursue my enemies. Is. At least they counted. Milan Kuchan was desperate. They were desperate. At least they wanted me to recognize as my ally this murderer here that you see, or his colleague. Yanis Yansha, or it would be Igor Boucher or somebody. At least one of these Udba assassins who present today as opposition, people that did their best to get me killed, beginning the Slovenian independence. The Yugoslav army no longer could torture me inside of the military installation because Yugoslavia no longer existed. They had to go out of Slovenia, whether they like it or not on their disappointment also. Because what angers me about this stuff the most, and that's why I dedicate this video, but what angers me the most about this is that these people enjoy, according to my memories, according to what I recall went on inside of these military installations, where these people would deliver me and they would come to pick me up. What I can tell you, oftentimes they did, what I can tell you, what angers me the most, is that the people want credit from me, the people that were literally involved in torture. They had different people, but these people always participated. And it became evident with Janis Jansha, with Igor Boucher, with all these people that came on the stage, that stayed on the stage, like a new people out of nowhere that appear on the stage, next to Borat Pahar, their opposition of Borat Pahar, what angers me the most is that these people enjoyed. It was something sadistic about it. It was really fun to see persons suffering, uh, sleep deprived. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Stink. Sometimes piss in my pants. Uh, all kinds of stuff went on, basically. And it was like, it was like some kind of addiction. Uh, the kids had 
computers. Uh, they had different kind of entertainment, but this adults, if you like, really, really psychologically imbalanced, insane, crazy, violent, uh, and wanted to look like cool people, like a diplomatic people, like for them, the gig, the best thing in the world was literally to see somebody suffering, torture. So before this Bohinska Bella goes, you should know the truth about Bohinska Bella. So I am going to distribute you Bohinska Bella. Bohinska Bella started in my life at age two and a half with Josip Brostito, who would deliver me to Bohinska Bella literally for the torture. We'll never forget the day with Jovanka and Josip Brostito, when we stop with the car and say, well, no, 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 he said, this is the place where I'm going to deliver you, bring you, if you're going to be bad with me. And I didn't understand anything. It was this beautiful building and so on and stuff like this. They tortured me inside. That's where the torture actually started. He would go and on with his Jovanka on his ranch and his beautiful... Uh, Birdo Prikranu, he would have a wonderful time over there. And in meanwhile, his boys would do the job on me. And this, in this, inside of this military installation and also in the area. The natives from over there participated, they watched. Slovenian people, yes. For uh, Loise Peterle and uh, Dmitry Rupel and Igor Bauch and Yanis Jansha, uh, you know, if they did destroy everything stolen, um, plundered National Slovenian Archive of Udba, uh, this is the problem, this is not my problem. I don't depend on any of this stuff and I don't want any kind of proofs, anything any kind of assistance because I will ask and demand capital punishment for Igor Boucher, for Loise Peterle, for Dmitry Rupel and for other that claimed were independence leaders in Slovenia. Slovenia had to learn where, who was the one who made Slovenia, who was the one who bring Slovenia to the surface, who was the one who bring Eastern Europe to the surface. Slovenia had to admit recognize its crimes against humanity, has to be honest with the criminal dealings, genocide, which Slovenian people enforced, nation enforced against me. Uh, I don't want any kind of assistance in respect to this kind of stuff, especially not from people like Loise Peterle, uh, Igor Boucher, Janis Janša, and so on. What I want to do with these people, I think I already stated everything on the internet, you know, I don't have any kind of uh, plans for these people. I would never, ever, you know, I would never, ever accept any kind of assistance from these people. These people were worse than Milan Kuchin. They were worse than Borda Pahor. They were worse than Tanya Payon. These people were only the extension of these people, a camouflage for death. They did absolutely everything to destroy me, to get me killed. In 2013, when they threw me inside a psychiatric hospital, it was Janis Jansha who made the big show, like persecuted man in Slovenia that is going to the jail, even shadowed me on every step of the way whenever they possibly. Every time when they did something, he made like a chaos and stuff to, to cover up, absolutely. But what is shocking, what is surprising, what angers me is that Slovenian nation as a nation did not took any kind of accountability, responsibility for this stuff. Stuff they started for their sake started when I was six months old. What do you think I was going to the Belgrade? Why do you think I was taken to the Belgrade? It wasn't only for the human experimentation purposes. It was for Slovenian police. It was for Slovenian politicians. So they could go and smell around Josip Brostito and see basically what goes on. This is how they got chance to interact behind the curtain. What do you think? Where do you got the information from? What went on? Croats, Slovenes, what went on inside of the Belgrade? You did not come to Belgrade anywhere near Tito without me. That's basically is what this was all about. You didn't make me. 
I made you. And for that matter, you engaged in genocide against me for 51 years, collectively so, the entire Slovenian parliament. It wasn't about the Slovenian police only. It goes far beyond. 